Sharing might be caring, but a true Stoic knows that some things are better left unsaid. In a world obsessed with oversharing, here's why keeping these 10 secrets will not only protect your peace, but also make you dangerously untouchable. We live in a culture that glorifies oversharing. From social media to coffee shop conversations, we're constantly encouraged to spill our guts, bare our souls, and air our every thought. But what if I told you that this relentless transparency is not only unnecessary, but also a threat to your peace, power, and progress? I learned this the hard way. Years ago, I believed that honesty and openness were the keys to building connections. I'd share my deepest fears with friends, my wildest dreams with colleagues, and my political views with anyone who'd listen. The result? My fears were used against me, my dreams were trampled by others' doubts, and my opinions sparked unnecessary conflicts. I began to realize that not everyone deserves to know your inner world. Stoicism teaches us to guard our inner self like a fortress. Sharing too much gives others the blueprint to your vulnerabilities, the keys to your emotions, and the power to manipulate your reality. It's time to embrace a more radical approach, silence. In this script, I'll walk you through 10 things a true Stoic should never share, no matter how much society pressures you to. These points might ruffle some feathers, but if you value your strength and serenity, you'll see why keeping these secrets is not just wise. It's essential. 1. Your deepest fears. We all have fears those dark, unsettling thoughts that creep in during moments of weakness. But here's the truth that no one tells you. Your deepest fears are your own to conquer. They're a reflection of your inner battles, not something to be handed over to others. When you share your fears, you're essentially giving others a weapon against you. Even those with the best intentions can't help but see you differently once they know what makes you tremble. They might start to treat you with pity, or worse, exploit those fears to gain an upper hand in subtle ways. For example, if you reveal a fear of failure, someone might push you into decisions that you're not ready to make, knowing you'll hesitate to risk it all. They might even undermine your confidence, feeding into that fear until it grows into something even more crippling. Moreover, fear is a private battlefield. It's a part of your psyche that you need to confront and overcome on your own terms. When you externalize it by sharing, you're seeking validation or comfort, an understandable but ultimately harmful crutch. This act of seeking reassurance only weakens your inner resolve making the fear seem larger and more insurmountable than it truly is. Consider this. If Marcus Aurelius had openly shared his fear of death or failure with those around him, would he have been the revered philosopher-emperor we remember today? Likely not. His strength lay in his ability to confront these fears internally, using them as fuel for self-mastery rather than allowing them to define or control him. In a world that often tells you to talk it out or share your burdens, a Stoic takes the opposite approach. Keep your fears close, like a fire that burns inside you, driving you forward, but never escaping your control. Use them as a source of strength, not as a topic of conversation. Master your fears in silence and let the world see only your courage. 2. Your most profound desires. Desires are the silent architects of our actions, guiding us toward what we believe will bring us happiness or fulfillment. Yet, the moment you share your most profound desires, you relinquish control over them, exposing yourself to the whims of others and the unpredictability of the world. I learned this lesson the hard way. A few years ago, I had a burning desire to start my own business a dream that had been quietly brewing inside me for years. Excited, I began sharing this ambition with friends and colleagues, hoping for encouragement and support. Instead, 
I was met with a wave of doubts and unsolicited advice. Some people questioned my ability to handle the risks, while others subtly hinted that my idea wasn't unique enough to succeed. Their skepticism planted seeds of doubt in my mind, and what started as a clear, focused ambition became clouded by uncertainty. Their comments, though well-meaning, weighed on me more than I anticipated. I found myself second-guessing every decision, worried that they might be right. The pure drive that once fueled my desire was diluted by the fear of failure and the need for external validation. The more I talked about my dream, the less it felt like my own. I began to realize that by sharing my desire, I had allowed others to shape it, turning what should have been a personal journey into something that was no longer entirely mine. Desires are inherently personal, a reflection of your deepest needs and aspirations. When you share them, you not only open yourself up to judgment, but also to manipulation. I've seen it happen when you confide in someone about your aspirations, they might not only question you, but also subtly try to steer you toward their vision of success, not yours. This can lead to a situation where you're no longer pursuing your true desires, but rather chasing after what you think will please others or meet societal expectations. For me, the lesson was clear. Desires should be guarded like a treasure. They remain a quiet force driving you forward, untainted by the opinions and influences of others. By not sharing them, you avoid the trap of becoming overly attached to their fulfillment and protect yourself from the disappointment that comes when desires are thwarted by external circumstances. In a world that encourages us to broadcast our goals and ambitions, I've learned to take a different path. Now, I let my actions reveal my ambitions, keeping my desires private where they belong. This approach not only protects my dreams, but also preserves the authenticity of my journey, allowing me to pursue what truly matters to me without the noise of external opinions. 3. Your inner struggles. Inner struggles are a universal part of the human experience, those quiet battles we fight within ourselves, often in the dead of night or in moments of solitude. These struggles might involve doubts about our worth, fears of failure, or the relentless pressure to meet expectations. However, sharing these struggles with others can often do more harm than good, diminishing the strength you need to overcome them. I used to believe that opening up about my inner struggles was a sign of strength, a way to connect with others and seek support. I would vent to friends about the challenges I faced, whether it was stress from work, feelings of inadequacy, or the pressure to live up to certain expectations. While it felt cathartic in the moment, I quickly noticed that sharing my struggles didn't bring the relief I expected. Instead, it often left me feeling even more burdened, as if I had transferred my inner turmoil to those around me without actually resolving it. What I came to realize was that my struggles were my own to navigate. By airing them out, I was looking for validation or comfort, something external to soothe an internal conflict. But this approach only diluted my resolve, making my challenges seem even more insurmountable. Instead of confronting my problems head-on, I found myself becoming dependent on others' reassurances, which often left me feeling even more powerless. Inner struggles are deeply personal, and while it might seem like sharing them would lighten the load, it often has the opposite effect. When you reveal your inner battles to others, you risk being seen through the lens of your struggles rather than your strengths. Even those with good intentions might begin to perceive you as weaker or less capable, subtly altering the dynamic of your relationships. Worse, some might exploit this knowledge, using your struggles as leverage in moments of conflict or competition. Moreover, sharing your inner struggles can create an unhealthy cycle of venting without action. It's easy to fall into the trap of discussing your problems endlessly without actually working towards solutions. 
Stoicism teaches us that true strength comes from within, from our ability to face our challenges quietly and with dignity. By keeping your struggles to yourself, you preserve the mental fortitude needed to confront them directly, without the distraction of external opinions or sympathy. Take, for instance, the Stoic philosopher Seneca, who endured great personal trials, including exile and political intrigue. Despite the immense pressure he faced, he kept his inner battles largely to himself, focusing instead on cultivating his inner strength and wisdom. His resilience came not from sharing his struggles with others, but from facing them head-on, learning from them, and emerging stronger on the other side. Now, I've embraced a more stoic approach. Instead of venting or seeking validation, I channel my energy into understanding and overcoming my inner conflicts on my own terms. This doesn't mean shutting others out entirely. It means recognizing that some battles are meant to be fought within. By keeping my struggles private, I've found a greater sense of control and clarity, allowing me to emerge stronger and more self-reliant. In a world that often equates vulnerability with strength, it can be controversial to suggest that some things are better kept within. But if you value your inner peace and personal growth, you'll find that confronting your struggles in silence is not only empowering, it's essential. Part 4. Your Wealth Wealth is a complicated subject, an emblem of success in many cultures, yet a potential source of envy, conflict and misunderstanding. The moment you begin to openly discuss your financial situation, whether you're well-off or struggling, you invite a host of problems that can disrupt your peace and relationships. There was a time when I thought that sharing details about my financial achievements was harmless. I'd casually mention a raise, a profitable investment or a new purchase, thinking that it would inspire others or simply serve as a conversation starter. However, I quickly learned that talking about money can have unintended consequences. Friends who once celebrated my successes began to react differently, some with subtle envy, others with condescending advice, and a few with outright resentment. What I thought was innocent sharing turned out to be a source of tension and discomfort. Discussing wealth openly creates a breeding ground for envy and judgment. Even among close friends, knowing the specifics of someone's financial situation can stir up feelings of inadequacy or competitiveness. It's human nature to compare ourselves to others, and wealth is one of the most tangible yet deeply personal metrics by which people measure success. When you disclose your financial status, you inadvertently set the stage for others to either feel superior or inferior to you, neither of which fosters genuine connection or peace of mind. Moreover, wealth can attract unwanted attention and expectations. If people know you have money, they might start to view you as a resource, expecting you to foot the bill at dinners, lend money, or contribute more than your fair share to group activities. This can strain relationships and place you in awkward, uncomfortable positions. Conversely, if you're struggling financially and share that information, you might find yourself the subject of pity or unsolicited advice, which can be just as demoralizing. Wealth is also a volatile topic because it taps into deeper issues of security and identity. In Stoic philosophy, material wealth is seen as indifferent, neither good nor bad in itself, but only as valuable as the use we make of it. The more you discuss your wealth, the more likely you are to tie your self-worth to it. If you're proud of your financial achievements, sharing them might subtly reinforce the idea that your value is connected to your bank balance. On the flip side, if you're in financial difficulty, discussing it openly can reinforce feelings of inadequacy and stress. Consider the example of Marcus Aurelius, one of the wealthiest and most powerful men of his time, who famously wrote about the impermanence of material possessions. Despite his immense wealth, 
He emphasized the importance of inner virtues over external riches. His stoic wisdom teaches us that wealth, while useful, should never define us or become the focus of our conversations and relationships. Through personal experience, I've learned to keep my financial situation private, understanding that wealth is a tool, not a topic. By not discussing it openly, I've maintained healthier relationships and avoided the pitfalls of envy, judgment and exploitation. It's allowed me to focus on what truly matters, developing my character, cultivating meaningful connections and finding fulfillment beyond material success. In a society that often equates wealth with worth, choosing not to share your financial status might seem countercultural, even controversial. But if you value your peace and the authenticity of your relationships, you'll find that keeping your wealth private is not only wise, it's liberating. Let your financial achievements or struggles be your own and let your true wealth be measured by the quality of your thoughts, actions and relationships, not the balance of your bank account. 5. Your past failures. We all have failures. Moments when life didn't go according to plan, when we fell short of our own or others' expectations. Society often tells us that sharing our failures is empowering, a way to show vulnerability and build connections. But a stoic perspective challenges this notion, suggesting that your past failures are best kept private, where they can serve as personal lessons rather than public spectacles. I used to believe in the value of sharing my past failures, thinking that it would make me relatable, even admirable. I'd talk about the job I didn't get, the project that flopped, or the relationship that ended badly, hoping to inspire others by showing that I'd bounced back. But I quickly noticed that not everyone reacts to these stories with empathy or encouragement. Some people, instead of seeing the resilience I gained, focused on the failure itself, subtly shifting their perception of me. Sharing your failures can easily lead to being defined by them. When you recount a failure, you might think you're highlighting how far you've come, but others might see only the setback, the mistake, or the weakness. They might start to associate you more with your failures than with your successes, diminishing your achievements in their eyes. Even worse, in competitive environments, revealing your past mistakes can be used against you, either as a way to undermine your credibility or to outshine you by comparison. Moreover, discussing past failures can trap you in the past, making it harder to move forward. Every time you retell the story of a failure, you're reliving it, reinforcing its presence in your mind this can prevent you from fully letting go and embracing the lessons learned. Stoicism teaches us to accept the past as unchangeable and to focus on what we can control, our present actions and future intentions. By constantly revisiting your failures, you risk becoming fixated on what went wrong rather than on how you can do better now. Another risk of sharing your failures is the potential for pity. While you might hope for understanding or encouragement, others might instead offer sympathy that, while well-intentioned, can feel patronizing. Being pitied for your past mistakes can erode your self-esteem and make you feel less capable than you truly are. It can also create an unspoken dynamic where you're seen as someone who needs to be handled with care, rather than as the strong, resilient person you've become. Consider the Stoic philosopher Epictetus, who endured slavery and hardship, yet rarely spoke of his suffering. Instead of dwelling on his past misfortunes, he focused on the wisdom he gained and how it shaped his present and future. He understood that his value wasn't tied to what he had endured, but to how he responded to it. His silence on his past failures wasn't about hiding them, but about refusing to let them define him. From my own experience, I've learned that keeping my past failures private has allowed me to move forward more freely, 
Instead of letting those failures become part of my public narrative, I've chosen to internalize the lessons and apply them quietly in my life. This approach has not only preserved my dignity, but also allowed me to rebuild my confidence without the weight of others' perceptions hanging over me. In a world that often glorifies sharing every aspect of our lives, choosing to keep your past failures to yourself might seem counterintuitive, even controversial. But if you value your growth and want to be defined by your current actions and future potential rather than your past mistakes, you'll find that silence is powerful. Let your past failures be your own, transforming them into personal wisdom that guides you forward without the need for public validation or sympathy. 6. Your political beliefs. Political beliefs are deeply personal, often shaped by our upbringing, experiences and values. In today's polarized world, where every opinion seems to be scrutinized and debated, sharing your political beliefs can lead to unnecessary conflict, alienation and even a loss of personal peace. A stoic approach would argue that your political beliefs, like many other deeply held convictions, are best kept private. There was a time when I believed that discussing politics openly was a way to engage in meaningful dialogue and contribute to positive change. I'd participate in debates, share my views on social media, and try to convince others of my perspective. But I quickly learned that these conversations often spiraled into arguments, damaging relationships and creating tension rather than fostering understanding. Friends who once saw me as a kindred spirit began to distance themselves, and acquaintances I barely knew felt entitled to challenge my beliefs, sometimes aggressively. The problem with sharing your political beliefs is that it often invites conflict, not resolution. Politics is inherently divisive, touching on core values that people hold dear. When you express your political views, you're not just sharing an opinion, you're revealing a part of your identity that others might strongly disagree with. This can lead to heated debates, strained relationships, and even permanent rifts. People may begin to define you by your political stance rather than by your character, reducing the complexity of who you are to a single aspect of your beliefs. Moreover, openly discussing politics can lead to a loss of personal peace. Engaging in political debates, especially in today's hyper-partisan environment, can be emotionally draining and mentally exhausting. The constant back and forth, the need to defend your position, and the inevitable encounters with hostility can take a toll on your well-being. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what we can control, our actions, thoughts, and emotions. By keeping your political beliefs private, you protect yourself from the turmoil that often accompanies political discourse, allowing you to maintain your inner calm and focus on personal growth. Another risk of sharing your political beliefs is the potential for judgment and exclusion. In many social and professional settings, politics can be a minefield. Expressing your views can lead to being stereotyped or pigeonholed, with others making assumptions about your character, intelligence, or intentions based solely on your political stance. This can limit opportunities, strain professional relationships, and even lead to discrimination or backlash in environments where your views are in the minority. Even in personal relationships, political differences can create tension. I've seen friendships and even family ties strained or broken over political disagreements. People who once got along well find themselves at odds, unable to reconcile their differing views. By keeping your political beliefs private, you avoid these conflicts, allowing your relationships to be defined by shared experiences, mutual respect and common interests rather than divisive politics. Consider the example of Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher-emperor who navigated the complex and often treacherous political landscape of ancient Rome. 
Despite his immense power and political responsibilities, Marcus focused on universal principles like justice, wisdom, and duty, rather than getting entangled in the partisan conflicts of his time. His meditations reveal a man more concerned with personal virtue and inner peace than with the political battles raging around him. He understood that true influence comes not from public declarations, but from the quiet strength of living according to one's principles. Through my own experiences, I've learned the value of keeping my political beliefs private. Instead of engaging in divisive debates, I focus on living by my values and making a positive impact in ways that transcend politics. This doesn't mean I'm indifferent or disengaged. It means I choose to direct my energy toward actions that align with my beliefs without getting caught up in the conflict and noise that often accompany political discussions. In a world where politics can feel inescapable, choosing to keep your political beliefs to yourself might seem controversial, even countercultural. But if you value your peace, relationships and personal growth, you'll find that silence can be a powerful tool. Let your actions reflect your values and let your political beliefs remain a private compass guiding you through the complexities of life rather than a public banner inviting conflict and judgment. 7. Your future plans. Future plans are often the blueprints of our aspirations, our hopes, dreams and goals laid out for the path ahead. It can be tempting to share these plans with others, whether to seek encouragement, advice or simply to express excitement. However, revealing your future plans can be more detrimental than beneficial. A stoic perspective suggests that keeping your plans private allows you to maintain control focus and freedom without the burden of external expectations or interference. I used to be someone who eagerly shared my future plans with friends, family and colleagues. Whether it was a career move, a personal project or even travel plans, I'd talk about my intentions with enthusiasm, expecting support and positive reinforcement. But over time, I noticed something unsettling. The more I shared, the more I felt the pressure of others' expectations. If I changed my mind or encountered setbacks, the disappointment or questioning from those I had confided in added an unnecessary weight to the challenges I was already facing. Sharing your future plans can create an environment of external pressure. Once you've told others about your goals, you might feel compelled to achieve them, not just for yourself, but to meet the expectations you've set in their minds. This can lead to a sense of obligation, where your plans become less about what you truly want and more about avoiding the embarrassment or judgment that might come from failing to follow through. The excitement of pursuing your dreams can be dampened by the anxiety of living up to what you've publicly committed to. Through personal experience, I've learned the power of silence when it comes to future plans. Now, instead of sharing my goals with everyone, I focus on quietly working toward them. I found that this approach not only preserves my motivation, but also allows me the freedom to change direction without the burden of external expectations. If a plan doesn't work out, I can adapt and move on without the added pressure of explaining myself to others. In a culture that often values transparency and openness, Choosing to keep your future plans private might seem counterintuitive, even controversial. But if you value your autonomy, focus and peace of mind, you'll find that there's immense strength in silence. Let your actions speak for themselves and allow your plans to unfold quietly, free from the scrutiny and influence of others. Your future is yours to shape. Keep it that way by guarding your plans until they become reality. In a world that pushes us to share everything, embracing silence can be a radical, even powerful choice. Keeping certain aspects of your life private, your fears, desires, struggles, wealth, failures, political beliefs and future plans, protects your peace 
and preserves your autonomy. Silence isn't about withdrawing or isolating. It's about maintaining control over your narrative and staying true to your inner compass. By choosing what to share and what to keep private, you reclaim your power, avoiding the distractions and pressures that come with public exposure. This quiet confidence allows you to live authentically, free from the influence of others' judgments or expectations. Embrace the power of silence and let it guide you as you navigate life on your own terms.